Let me tell you something. I honestly don't feel safe in America anymore. I don't feel safe consuming the food. I don't feel safe consuming the water. I don't feel safe having a child here or sending them to school. I don't feel safe in any home. Every day I wake up, every bone in my body literally tells me to run. Every ounce of me wants me to leave. Run for your life. Go back to Africa. That's all I hear. That's daily. I think about this daily because I feel like at any moment something bad is going to happen here. People are slowly losing their rights. Freedom of speech was like the first one, in the uh, Bill of Rights, right? Now it's a thing of the past. They're forcing things inside of you to mess with your DNA. As soon as I came to America, I gained weight. I started becoming fat. I started being unhealthy. I got depressed. I was just recently in a very deep depression that lasted over a year. Right before I started my TikTok account. Am I the only one who thinks this? I honestly, honestly feel like it's very, very unsafe being in America right now. I feel like COVID was a warning for us all to leave. I know many of you saying, no, don't leave. This was our land. We were here first. But it's not about leaving it indefinitely. It's about leaving, at least knowing that you have somewhere safer to be until things die down a bit. It's about going out there to discover life because I went to the Netherlands in 2017 and that was the best feeling even though it was in Europe and not Africa oh my god the air was different the people were more friendly the people were more fit they had bicycles everywhere instead of cars it was just it felt like life it's stressful to raise a child by yourself in America it's stressful to live day by day and I honestly think I can't do it anymore. Shalom. Kohlem la Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah Bahashem Rakwa Kadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shah. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, tremble ye women, that are at ease. So many women in these last days are finding out they've been lied to. We've been lied to. This doctrine of feminism has pushed the notion you don't need a man. When a man's role is very critical as a provider and protector. And most importantly, in these last days, that role of being a protector is crucial because we are heading into a total socioeconomic collapse and men are going to be needed as protectors. Let's go into the word. So our spirit tells us something is not right or something is coming. Many people erroneously call this a sixth sense, but it is the spirit 
that's telling us that something is off. Prepare ourselves. So the Lord Spirit gives us that inner voice that guides and directs our path. Let's go here to Job 32. Let's go to verse 7. I said, days should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So the Lord's spirit is being poured out on us in these last days. And this is why many people is seeing visions or dreaming dreams because we're in those times. I'm going to go here. We're going to go to Acts 2. The book of Acts, chapter 2. Let's go to verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith the Most High, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidings I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So many people are seeing all types of weird visions and are sharing these visions in these last days. Something is in the air, something that is not tangible, that we cannot touch or see, but we can feel it. Through the Spirit of the Lord, we know something big is getting ready to go down. And if you don't have a man of, a man of the Lord in your life, this is the time to hook up and connect with a man of the Lord. I'm just saying, how that happens or transpires, that's between you and the Most High. Let's go here. <clears throat> so the Bible is the real test. The Bible is the real measuring stick, the litmus test, so to speak, that tests and tries our faith. So people are beginning to realize that this entire construct has been a lie. Let's go here. I don't need a man. Men are worthless. The Bible is a fairy tale book. Then why are the prophecies coming to pass? The M to the O to the T to the B. Armageddon. World War III. Have we not prophesied about these things? Lockdowns. Wars and rumors of wars. So the Spirit of the Lord is moving throughout the land in these last days, all throughout the earth. His name has been raised back up in the earth in these last days. That's why we're seeing this large swarm of activity. Let's go to Luke 19. Now this happened back in 70 AD during the fall of Jerusalem. But things repeat itself. Everything circles back around through reincarnation. So we're going to see a second iteration of 70 AD. But this time it's going to be on a global mass scale. The Israelites are scattered into every nation. Go to Luke 19, verse 41. 
book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 41. And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. So Yahushai was prophesying about 40 years prior to the massive slaughter of the Israelites and the downfall of Jerusalem, which would occur 40 years later at 70 AD. So now we're going to see a repeat of this times 10. Globally, global lockdowns. Luke, <coughs> excuse me, let's read that again. Luke 19, verse 42, saying, If thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side. So this is an international mandate that's going to come down the pipeline. 70 AD on steroids. It's coming. A trench is going to be cast upon us. So the internet of things is going to be used as a net technology which includes the M to the O to the T to the B. So they're going to use the state-of-the-art technology and biometrics. Let's go to verse 44. <coughs> Excuse me. And shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. Jacob's trouble is going to come upon the Lord's children. It's going to try our faith. So this tribulation and this test is going to come upon all of the world in an orcumeny sense, the entire earth. Let's go to Revelations 3. Yeah, we got to go to Revelations chapter 3. Let's go to verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. This is where the technology comes into play. So the world is going to be steered towards agreeing with these mandates. That's a part of the new world order, a part of the global network, the internet of things. Go to verse Revelations 3, verse 11. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. So the moment of truth is going to be upon us. Choose ye this day who you are going to serve. Are you going to be married to the beast or remain faithful and prove fidelity to the Most High, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? That test is getting ready to come upon the entire earth. 
Revelations 3, verse 12. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my power and the name of the city of my power, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name, a new holy righteous kingdom, a new Jerusalem. So the city of David, the new governing authority is going to be established on the earth. 144,000 mighty men under our king, Yahweh Shai. Let's close out here. Everything the prophets have been talking about is transpiring. There is no more conspiracy theories. These prophecies are popping off the pages of the Bible. The Bible is a true book that validates itself through precepts. We're going to close out in Isaiah 32. I'll start at the top. The book of, <coughs> excuse me, the book of Isaiah, chapter 32, verse 1. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. King Yehoshai, followed by King David, followed by the twelve disciples, the 144,000 mighty men. The tabernacle of David is being raised up. Let's go to verse 2. And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest as rivers of water in a dry place as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land the tempest of the winds destroying winds thermonuclear destruction and the winds of civil unrest race riots Wars. How do we know that? Well, I'm going to show you. For the second Ezra. So those winds are winds of change. Destruction that's going to be ushered in. Second Ezra 13. Let's go to verse 5. So these winds start with civil wars. Illegal mandates by the government, which is going to lead to a total, a total nuclear holocaust. Second address 13, verse 5. And after this, I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the men that came out of the sea. Armageddon, the third world war, which we're going to see the son of man crack those guys. Yahweh Shai. Let's go back here. We're going to go to Jeremiah 51. So Yahweh Shai is going to crack those skies right there at the brink of the Third World War. Not before they mandate the MOTB. So that's going to set it off. All hell is going to break loose. Let's go to Jeremiah 51. The Bible says that a man shall be a covert or a hiding place from the wind, from destruction. So a man is going to be as the golden wedge of Ophir, the men of the Lord. 
Going to Jeremiah 51, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. Starting with civil unrest, wars, rumors of wars, martial law, followed by a nuclear strike. Let's go down. I'm going to close out here. <clears throat> Isaiah 32. Let's go to verse 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. So the Lord is speaking through his mouthpiece, the prophets. This is not a game. We're seeing events begin to heat up, escalate towards more tension, more suppression of free speech, an attack on Second Amendment gun ownership, a cancel culture that's beginning to flourish, canceling out people that go against the grain, that go against the mainstream. So we are in those times. Rise up, ye women, and are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. So Elder Apostle Gabar goes into this a lot. Metropolis means mother city. So this metropolis, the daughter of Babylon, has been built up to a paradise, luxury, comfort items, Starbucks, the finest vintage wine, these nice corporate level jobs. A lot of you women are walking around with a suit on, the little suits that comes with a nice dress and have made it big here in corporate America. So this luxurious life is going to see a socioeconomic downfall. All the comfort items are getting ready to go away. All hell is going to break loose in this place. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at ease, be troubled, ye careless ones, strip you and make you bare, and gird sackcloth upon your loins. Cloths of mourning, great mourning and sorrow is coming. Massive devastation, great death, pain and suffering, great tribulation. And Jacob is in the crosshairs, the Israelites. Let me tell you something. I honestly don't feel safe in America anymore. I don't feel safe consuming the food. I don't feel safe consuming the water. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rekwakadash, Rekwakadam. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharela. And the Bab Baba. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.